Chapter 3 of Claude Lightfoot, or How the Problem Was Solved, by Father Francis Finn. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 3, in which Claude surprises his sister, Kate, and John Winters surprises everybody. At twenty-nine minutes past three, a small boy was bending the crab, and diversifying this exercise by walking on his hands, in front of the Notre Dame Convent School at half after three a bell sounded and the small acrobat jumping to his feet picked up his books and stationed himself at the school door presently the girls came trooping out talking volubly according to the amiable manners of their sex and time of life the small boy did not seem to concern himself with the musical stream of chatter nor did he bestow more than a cursory glance upon any one of the talkers till his eye lighted upon a little miss of fifteen smiling and silent among the chatterers hi kate he shouted and with unintentional rudeness he elbowed a young lady aside and gave kate a brotherly kiss why claude exclaimed kate in astonishment what brought you here my feet kate both of them you see i wanted to surprise you i've come to take you home and i'm going to come every afternoon see i've kept it a secret all day mamma was in it and she likes it ever so much the college lets out at three and it gives me just enough time to come here and catch you we'll have great times going home together every afternoon kate's eyes shone with delight and her pretty cheeks took on a deeper flush and dimpled into smiles no one looking at the two would fail even in a passing glance to perceive their relationship and no one watching them in this short change of greetings would hesitate to say that if ever brother and sister loved each other and were proud of each other that brother and sister were claude and kate there was the same complexion kate's being a trifle more delicate the same facial expression the girl older by three years was far maturer her eyes were very bright very blue and as they gazed into claude's face very tender she lacked of course much of claude's liveliness and it was well she did one can stand only a certain amount even from a boy and claude exceeded that the easy good nature of claude appeared in her softened and refined people would style it sweetness and were it not that the word has been cheapened i could sum up the description of claude's sister by saying that she was a sweet girl claude had a good mother she had fostered by every art and device the love between this happy-go-lucky lad and the wiser sister she had happily succeeded and these two little ones knew each other's hearts and loved each other in fullness of measure the vision and memory of kate was the most effectual breakwater to claude's extravagance he knew that he was to render her an account and often he paused on the verge of some daring scheme checked by the image of her sweet sad reproving face it was so kind of you claude said kate it will make the last hour of class pass lightly to think that you are on the way to meet me as i come out and then such talks as we'll have on the way home yes it'll be immense and look here kate it'll make me behave the last hour of class or i'll be put in jug and won't have a chance to come and take you home at this point claude reversing the conventional etiquette put his arm through his sister's and kate was too overjoyed to correct this breach of decorum as they walked gaily down the street toward the river which divided the east side of the city from the west what's the jug claude that's what the fellows call it if you're kept in by your teacher you've got to stay in after class in one of the classrooms and work out your punishment all the other fellows who are kept in have to go to the same room that's the jug and it keeps going for half an hour you must try to keep out of that claude or it will spoil everything i came near being in jug this afternoon all the same remarked claude going a little out of his way and dragging kate after him in order to give a stray oyster can an energetic kick did you yes my teacher mr grace is a nice man and he looks like a saint all the chaps in our class say so even those who are down on him but he's awful correct he wants a fellow to be just so he doesn't give me any chance if he'd only get mad i wouldn't mind 
but he looked so nice and quiet once when he came up to me he was smiling and that's the time he came down on me hardest the boys in our class say he never gets rattled but look out for him when he smiles and looks very amiable dan dockery said a funny thing kate he said when an indian goes on the war-path he puts on his war-paint but mr grace puts on a smile well after class mr grace called me and he looked so nice and amiable i thought he was going to give me something he said claude you've been very troublesome to-day and you'd better go to jug now and write one hundred times i must not fidget in class now that was awful hard kate for i had been looking forward all day to springing the surprise on you so i tried to beg off i said i had done my best and he smiled i said it was my first day and he smiled i said i wouldn't do it any more and he looked just like a picture saint then i felt like crying and i out and out told him the whole truth (laughs) that's where you should have begun dear said kate i guess it was kate as soon as i told him how anxious i was to meet my sister he stopped smiling and began to think then he said i might go while kate and claude are crossing the grand avenue bridge it may be worth while accounting for mr grace's act of mercy this boy he had reflected needs all the influence of his sister to tone him down if he walks home with her every afternoon he will not be tempted to break lamp-posts ring door-bells and steal rides on street-cars as they walked along the avenue on the west side claude narrated every circumstance of his day's adventures from the first hour of class to the last when he disturbed the ranks by jumping over a boy's head kate listened with interest and sympathy she had no word of blame for her little darling but she stood up for mr grace you must try to like your teacher very much claude she said in her quiet earnest way it's the first time you've ever had a religious for a teacher and you need a little piety dear that's so answered claude resisting a temptation to vault over a hitching post and you should have heard him in catechism class you could see that he was dead earnest and he spoke so nicely claude's appreciation was just mr grace was at his best in teaching christian doctrine were it not for his want of sympathy for the wilder lads which many of them returned with reverential dislike mr grace through his devout instructions might have bound each and every one by the golden chain of love to the feet of god and remember claude continued kate that to those who don't understand you you are a very troublesome boy mr higgins our next-door neighbor thinks you ought to be in jail don't you remember how he told you the other day that he thought you were possessed by the devil claude's voice rippled into a silvery wave of laughter and in the brief spell of mirth he so far forgot himself as to take a flying leap over a large box of goods which they happened to be passing is that the way you intend to escort me home dear asked kate with her gentle smile oh i beg pardon kitty i clean forgot when you reminded me of mr higgins i could have jumped over a telegraph pole almost claude continued kate you haven't told me about the most important thing of all i know it said claude on the point of clapping his sister on the back and i kept it back a purpose tell me dear i've been thinking about it all day the vice-president says that i'm just in time they began the first communion class about two weeks ago the first communion day is to be on the last sunday in may and to-day is the thirtieth of april there are ten boys besides myself in first communion class so dear we've only a month to get ready we must pray hard and be very good yes kate we'll do our best i'm a little afraid though they put off a boy if he doesn't behave well and kitty it's so hard for me to behave when you're not around kate felt prompted to kiss the little man out of hand but grand avenue was a crowded thoroughfare in lieu of this she patted the muscular arm which was drawn through hers 
and there's another thing kitty we'll have to begin to study our latin after supper i've begun already said kate what cried claude leaping into the air considerately taking his arm out of kate's in doing so and bringing his heels together three distinct times now claude well i began one week ago at the latin as soon as papa made up his mind to send you to college i knew we'd have to begin latin so i made a start at once in order to help my frisky little brother there now that's my surprise kitty you're a darling and it was with some difficulty that kate succeeded in keeping her brother from openly testifying his gratification in a demonstrative hug they were now passing the public library and claude's quick eye caught sight of two young men as they stepped off the elevator at the entrance of that building why kitty here are two of the boys i was telling you about hi frank john the two poets each with a book under his arm turned to see the mercury compound all motion as to his lively legs pirouetting beside a girl i'm glad we've met you i've just been telling my sister about you two and rob collins and she wants to know you kate this is frank elmwood and this is john winter they are poets and i guess they write poetry books kate held out her hand gracefully to each and clearly showed that she was pleased to meet her brother's friends i'm glad to meet you mr elmwood and kate paused for winter was in knee breeches and mr winter if you are call us frank and john laughed frank his eyes twinkling behind his spectacles john winter was not quite at his ease he was a bashful youngster and not knowing what to do with his arms put them akimbo and blushed still more claude was telling me about his brush with worden and how you two came to his help it was very nice of you we uh <clears throat> we fooled worden bad blurted out john still with his arms akimbo and wondering what was the matter with his feet on uttering this profound remark john blushed more violently than before and asked himself mentally what the young lady with the clear blue eyes thought of his grammar it was very nice of you and frank john said kate making an endeavour not altogether unsuccessful to put the unhappy youngster at his ease my brother claude is very thoughtless and is constantly getting into quarrels that's so kit assented claude with penitence in his voice he and i have agreed never to begin a quarrel continued the girl whereupon a broad grin came over frank's face the idea of kate's identifying herself with claude in his quarrels was too much for his sense of humour kate laughed in return it sounds funny to you continued kate but i've got into the habit of talking about claude's affairs as though they were mine so claude and i never start a quarrel but sometimes we forget ourselves and put other boys out of patience and then we find ourselves striking back don't we claude yes we do answered claude quite seriously frank laughed and john who had now put his hands out of sight in his pockets broke into a smile and then claude comes home with a swollen nose or puffed out lip and generally with his clothes torn even if he escapes fighting i'm pretty hard on clothes said claude i'll bet the sign of the blue flag makes money on me if you're walking up town said kate to her new acquaintances we might all go together and claude will tell you how he was measured for the pair of knee breeches he's wearing now i live on the east side frank made answer but i'm on my way to john's to borrow his latin themes in our class john is the great authority in theme work frank as he spoke glanced maliciously at john who of course blushed again he's stuffing oh goodness he's exaggerating claude answered john directing the first part of the sentence to the sister and turning the conclusion full upon claude kate could scarcely refrain from laughing now said frank as they took their way up the avenue tell us about how you bought those pants claude you begin kit and we'll do it together very well 
when we settled that claude was to go to college mamma wanted to start him in with a new outfit so yesterday claude went down to the blue flag with permission to do his own buying when claude entered the store a clerk came up to him they all know him there and asked him what he wanted i want to see the boss said claude he's busy said the clerk all right i'll wait the clerk went away then and after a while the senior partner came out he's very fond of us and when he saw claude he laughed yes put in claude and he said you were here only two weeks ago if all little boys wore out clothes like you i'd have been a millionaire long ago and then he asked me what i wanted i told him that i wanted a pair of pants that would fit me so as i could put my foot around my neck <laughs> you see the last pair i bought fitted for everything except that and i can't enjoy myself if i can't put my foot about my neck and then continued kate the proprietor called out to know whether there were any knee breeches in the establishment with copper plating and brass finishings kate paused to laugh and you may be sure her merriment found a fine echo in claude of course he was joking explained claude and the clerk he laughed till he shook all over when the boss hustled around himself and got me these i put them on in the little green dressing-room and came out feeling jolly and then do you know what happened the proprietor made claude put both his feet around his neck whose neck and whose feet asked frank mischievously claude's neck and claude's feet laughed kate did he put both feet around at the same time no one at a time frank i'll bet i can put both around all the same stated the object of this narrative in his matter-of-fact way and then when claude said that the clothes were good for that sort of exercise the man made him put his foot in his mouth turn a handspring and bend the crab claude was delighted the proprietor who is a friend of papa's told us all about it last night he said i've made a hit with one customer anyhow claude has made me promise to wait on him personally whenever he comes because i know the right way to find out whether a small boy's knee breeches fit him that's so added claude lots of clerks seem to think that all a boy wants pants for is to stand around in well kate said frank john and i turn here we're very glad to have met you and you may rely upon it that if we can help claude we will do so thank you very much i'm so glad that claude has found such kind friends among catholic boys said kate warmly so far he has had few boy friends won't you come up some evening and take tea with us mamma will be delighted and claude really needs some boy friends kate made this request very earnestly during the foregoing conversation she had been studying the faces of the two poets john she perceived with his smooth ruddy face was bashful timid rather immature and yet not without a fair sense of humour frank was ready quick honest and energetic energetic that was his predominant trait his lips were thin his mouth firm and his pale features relieved from a touch of austerity by the twinkling eye gave him the air of a thorough student as indeed he was certainly we shall be glad to call answered frank well good afternoon good afternoon sir added john addressing himself to kate john almost broke into a run after this effort you remember the problem concerning claude that i broached this morning asked frank putting his hand on the shoulder of his now fiery-faced companion i remember said john that i put my foot into it every time i got a chance oh bother kate saw you were bashful and appreciated your condition she's a good girl and if that brother of hers is to be saved at all she's the one to do the saving yes john kate solves the problem i guess so answered john moodily as the sequel will show kate did not solve the problem End of chapter three